Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. My name is Felicia from Sweet Georgia, and welcome to the first live stream session of 2023. I can't believe it. Thank you guys so much for being here. I love seeing you guys here in the chat. Wonderful. So exciting. It's January. <laughs> it's the start of the year. We have a lot of things to talk about today. Let me know if you can hear me okay, if you can see me okay. I think everything is working. If I remember how to set everything up. Um, but today, yeah, I have actually a lot of things on my desk that I wanted to share and talk about today. Um, and I also have a lot of things that I want to talk about with regards to, you know, beginning of the year, goals. This is a thing that we always talk about at the beginning of the year, setting goals. There's a lot of stuff a lot of conversation about that that I want to share about. And I have a couple of new things that I also want to share with you, things that we're experimenting with and things that we're going to try out this year. And so I hope that you guys will stay for that part of the conversation. We're going to share about a new community offering that we're going to be doing soon. So the first thing, oh, I should probably welcome you guys. You guys can see in the chat here, we have Vicky, we have Bridget, we have Greta, all from the Sweet Georgia team. And so they are here to say hello and send a wave. And um, oh, there's Ruth. Wonderful. Um, they're here to basically uh, help with any questions that you guys might have during the conversation, during the chat. I try to read the chat as I go, but <laughs> it sometimes goes a little bit fast. So let's get started. The first thing that I want to share with you is um, some of the things that we have at Sweet Georgia that have been just recently released. Uh, they are very often limited edition things, limited time offering things. And so the very first thing that I want to share is the new gradient sock lengths that we are doing for just January, I believe. These are just available for January. These are gradient sock blanks, and I've talked about sock blanks before, but the idea is that they are one strand of sock yarn that has been knitted into a fabric that we then dye in a gradient colorway. This colorway happens to be called hibernate, which is lovely and wonderful for the winter season just to stay cozy and stay curled up. So that is what these colors are about, kind of nice vibrant pink here there's a nice kind of like woody brown here and a bit of a kind of a lupine color stealth mode kind of color down here grayish blue dark and moody yes i love this so if you would like to see what something like this could be knit up into we do have a shawl pattern here and this one is actually a shawl this is like a little uh shawlette you could wear you know, mini shawlette. This one was designed by Tabitha. This one's called Cades Grove. And so this pattern is also available on our website. So just one sock blank can become one shawl. You could do any kind of pattern that you like. So that's a nice, interesting asymmetrical shawl shape as well. So that one available to order until the end of the month and then it's gone. So that's one of the things. The other thing is, which I had mentioned, I think last month, we are doing these Stitch Diaries boxes. So these Stitch Diaries, um, you don't get the swatches. You have to make your own swatches. Um, but inside this box is called, this is called Stitch Diaries Season Number Two. And these, this is a collaboration that we're doing between Tabitha, who's designing a lot of the patterns that are going in here, and the dyers at our studio who are creating their own colorways specifically for this box. And it is to share their own personal stories, share a little bit more about each individual dyer who works here at Sweet Georgia. And so this particular box, it, the colorway was designed by Hoy. And so you can see a sort of a sneak preview of what that might look like once it's been knit up, that colorway. But the colorway is here. It is called Tabby Cafe. So this sort of Ma no, it's not marled. It's kind of like this. Uh, it's got layered colors to it. It's really, really lovely. Um, and this one is actually um, named after his cat. <laughs> and so you can read all about the story of Hoy and Hoy's cat in here. There's also a sample of the socks here. They're all knit up in here. That's what it looks like once it's all been knit up. And so you can do contrasting heels and toes. There's stitch patterns here that you can combine in order to make something like this. And then in the box, there are other little goodies as well. So these ones, these ones are stitch stoppers 
from Fox and Pine. Uh, really, really super adorable. Maybe, can you see them? There you go. So they keep your stitches from slipping off the needles and then you basically tuck them on the end of your knitting needles. And so those are from Fox and Pine in PEI. Really cute and adorable. Little beads. Lovely. Okay, so that is going in there. And then the other thing that's in here is a camp candle. So this is a really lovely candle. This one is a soy and coconut. These are locally made by Megan uh, Camp Candle Company. This one in here happens to be called Wanderlust. It has wildflower, coconut, sandalwood, and it's crafted in BC here. It smells amazing. It makes the whole box actually smell amazing. And so then you get the yarn, you get the candle, you get the stitch stoppers, and then you get this little booklet. And in the booklet, there's six stitch patterns as well as a sock recipe. So that is all in the box. And this is only available for a limited time as well. This is not like a forever thing. This is a uh, until uh, until Teresa takes it off the website thing. <laughs> so we have season two. We are going to have other seasons coming up as well. And just to share more with you about all the different people who work here. So that is super, super fun. Um, yeah, you can see some of the stitch patterns that have been knit up as swatches for that little box here. Very, very pretty. And so that's the colorway that's been knit up, that Tabby Cafe color. So pretty. Now, the big thing, the big thing that we want to share with you is the big reveal for our Advent 2022 patterns. So this past year, you know, we've been doing Advent for a number of years, creating sort of an Advent uh, Christmas countdown, kind of like a holiday countdown box. And so every year that we've done this holiday countdown box, we've done it a little bit differently. Um, one year we did you know, mixed silk mist in with the sock yarn. And another year we did a weaving pattern. And so this past year we did a spinning fiber box for the very, very first time. Um, and that was really like bonkers amazing. Like we ended up selling out the fiber box and then had to make more fiber boxes. So maybe we'll do that again next year. Um, but the other thing that we did this past year is that we did both knitting and crochet patterns and we did fingering weight and DK weight. So there's actually four projects that could have been possible out of the Advent 2022 box, depending on which box you got. So all of the patterns have actually been released individually and they're all available on Ravelry now. Um, so there's two shawl patterns in fingering weight. So I'm going to show you. This is my sticky note. You don't need the sticky note. <laughs> this is the first one. This is the knitted fingering weight shawl. Really, really beautiful. This one was designed by Tabitha. And the name on this one is Deck the Halls by Tabitha. This one is the knit sample with the fingering weight yarn. It's really, really lovely. Um, yes, Greta saying that you can see the patterns on the website. I think you can see all the patterns a little bit uh, more up close and personal, but that's one of them. The other fingering weight project was designed by Ruth. And Ruth is in the chat here today as well too. So this is the crochet version of the shawl. So this is fingering weight as well, exactly the same color, same yarn, everything. But this is the crochet version of the shawl. I think it's beautiful. I love these like ripply wavy lines. I feel like this is something that I could maybe make. The name on this one is all is bright all is bright and this one is designed by ruth say hi ruth <laughs> we also have two dk weight projects and so these are both cowls and so i'm going to show the knitting one first the knitted one was designed by ruth as well and so this one is called tinsel and garlands and so this is again same colors we dyed the same colors for the advent box but these ones have been dyed on superwash dk as opposed to the tough love sock and so the idea with this is that it would have helped anybody who wanted to be able to knit their project a little bit faster a little bit quicker all of that kind of stuff the dk weight just knits up faster and quicker and so it makes a lovely looking graduated cowl 
And again, as always, these are sort of mystery knit along kind of kits. So every day you receive some instructions about what color to use and what stitch pattern to use. So you don't necessarily know what the whole thing is going to look like until the very end. And so it just gives you a chance to knit for maybe 10 minutes a day or 30 minutes a day and just do a little something um, to enjoy every day of knitting or crochet during the holidays. And so that's what this call, cowl is all about. So this one designed by Ruth. So many like interesting stitch patterns through all of this. I love this one with the slip stitches that the checkerboard pattern is very cool. And then there's a little bit of lace down here at the bottom. So lots and lots of fun things to look at. Um, and then the last cowl here, this one is the crochet DK weight cowl. And this one is designed by Charlotte. This one's called Midnight Clear and Charlotte. Charlotte's uh, been in Taiwan uh, visiting her family. And so she's coming back next week. We're excited for Charlotte to come home. <laughs> so that will be great. But this is designed by Charlotte. And you can see um, there's a number of like, it kind of has uh, some stitches here that look a little bit like gran like a traditional granny square kind of stitches. Um, there's a kind of like a lacy mesh thing happening here. Yeah, I think that this is really great in terms of being able to practice a lot of different stitches and attempt a lot of different stitches and then not having to commit to doing overall an entire shawl and just one kind of stitch pattern. You kind of like do a little bit for the day and then the next day you do a different little bit and then the next day you do a different little bit and every day you get to enjoy a little bit about that hand dyed color. So that is super fun. Yes. You guys all did such a great job. Charlotte, Ruth, Tabitha, these projects are all lovely. So if you did not get an advent box, that's totally, totally fine. You can use actually yarn from your stash. You can use scrap yarn, leftover yarn, little bits of yarn, whatever. Um, but these patterns are gonna be 20% off until January the 16th uh, using the code advent release. So advent release. So if you use that code, you'll be able to get 20% off these patterns until January 16th. I think that's sometime next week, <laughs> a couple days from now. So those are the things that have been gracing my desk for the past couple of days. They are lovely. I am really especially fond of this one. I feel like this was something that I would love to do. I mean, you could even, if you had one skein, you could just knit this entire shawl or crochet this entire shawl with one skein or one graduated sock blank, something like that. So lots and lots of things that you could do with all of these. So those are the things that were on my table. Now, <laughs> let's talk a little bit about the beginning of the year and goal setting and all these kinds of things. And I know like it starts off every year, the beginning of the year, you see like a lot of stuff around like new goals, new you, fresh, clean slate, all of this kind of stuff. And I, found it actually interesting. I, I noticed that recently somebody um, was saying something about setting craft goals for the year. And I noticed that the response was, oh, setting goals is something that I do for work. I'm required to do it for work. Why would I want to do it for my hobby? <laughs> and I, I recognize that absolutely like setting goals for the year, setting goals um, is often done because you feel pressure from external sources to, um, to, to set these goals or you feel uh, compelled by other people's expectations of what you should be doing this year. So there's a little bit of that, but I kind of feel like the people who really, I mean, people who love making, we love making things. And I think that we're very um, internally motivated in a lot of ways. We want to make things. We want to set goals because we have a desire to make things. We have a desire to achieve some things. And so I don't think the challenge is with setting the goals. I feel like the challenge is with being overwhelmed by the number of goals that we might want to set. So I think that that's a little bit of a challenge. So today uh, I wanna talk a little bit about um, how I'm gonna approach uh, my creative projects this year, what I'm gonna do in terms of goal setting and planning. And I wanna talk about kind of two, um, I feel like naturally occurring phenomenon that happen at this time of the year. And one of the um, first things is that at the start of the year, we have a lot of conversations about um, the desire to kind of like refresh our stash or de-stash or make things from stash or stash busting, like all of these things. Like I even talked about how um, December, no, January 1st, New Year's Day, I spent about five or six hours cleaning out my attic to clean out my stash. 
de-stashing a lot of things, passing yarn on to other knitters and crocheters who might be able to use some of this stuff. Um, and so de-stashing is one thing. I do find personally that I, I have been de-stashing the same stash every year, uh, like every six months or so, I go in and I kind of de-stash yarn from the same stash and it's still stash yarn that I've been saving for years and years and years. Um, and I haven't really done anything with it. Whereas whenever I'm starting new projects, I do tend to gravitate towards new yarn. So that part of it has been a bit of a challenge. It's very difficult to de-stash when you're like using new yarn and looking at your old yarn. And so there's a little bit of a need, I think this year for me at least, to combine things together, to use like a little bit of old stuff and add a little bit of new stuff and then combine the two together. So that's part of the conversation that we're going to have um, a little bit later today as well. It's really about um, being able to not feel like you only can use old things, <laughs> but like use a little bit of old stuff and a little bit of new stuff and combine it to make something beautiful and wonderful. So that is one thing that we've been thinking a lot about. So Tabitha and I have been talking for actually a number of months about the idea of doing some kind of a make along that is a stash busting sort of make along. It could be like um, using some of the things from your stash and getting some new things and combining them together. But the idea is that in February, we want to do a thing called a hold along. And it's going to be a make along that is about multi-stranded knitting. So either actually multi-stranded knitting, multi-stranded crochet, multi-stranded weaving, whatever it is, but it's multiple strands of different fibers and different colors. So it gives you kind of like an opportunity to experiment with different kinds of gauges, different kinds of textures, different kinds of feels. And so we'll have more details coming about that sort of hold along, but just kind of keep it in the back of your mind that this is something that we're going to be doing later on this year. Um, like actually, this is one that I just whipped off the uh, knitting machine a couple of days ago. And this is again, two yarns that have been sitting in my stash for probably the past year at least. So there was two sock weight yarns. One of them is dark. It was called Evening and it was a sparkly Cash Lux Spark yarn. So cashmere blend, fingering weight with a little bit of sparkle. And then there was another bluish yarn, a little bit lighter bluish yarn. I, it's not fizzy water, but it, I can't exactly remember which colorway it is. I think it might be starlight. And so there was kind of like a darker blue and a lighter blue mixed together. And then I got a new silk mist. I got a new skein of silk mist yarn, which is a mohair fuzzy kind of yarn. And basically knit this five by five pattern, which I have been knitting for years now. It's a free pattern that we've had on Ravelry for years and years and years. And basically all it is, is it's a five by five rib. So five knit stitches, five purl stitches, and then you knit this big long thing and then you kitchener this two stitches or yeah, kitchener the two ends together so that you get this uh, continuous cowl and then you just double loop it and then I, I wear it like this. So I've made a couple of these before by hand, but this is the first one that I've made on my knitting machine. And so that was just an experience of being able to um, convert this very, very simple um, hand knitting pattern into some instructions that I can use at the machine. And for me, it was like figuring out how to use my ribber and how to move stitches from the main bed to the river bed and to learn how to do that in order to make this very, very simple pattern. But it was great because I made this and it only took about an hour. <laughs> and that was, that was very exciting. So to be able to use some yarn from my stash, to be able to do a little bit of de-stash like that, um, and then make something it was really, really wonderful. Plus the other one that I have, that kind of orangey brownish one, I can't find it. <laughs> I don't know where I put it. So I just need to make more of these. So I have them like in every corner of the house whenever I am feeling cold. Um, the other thing that I'm thinking about doing with this particular pattern is I have like, I know maybe you guys do too, but I have like tiny little balls of sock yarn everywhere in the house, just like leftover balls of sock yarn um, left over from making socks. So when you make socks, we have what, like 425 yards about 115 grams per ball of yarn. Um, and when I make socks, they end up being usually about 60, 70 grams total. So then I'll have about 30 or 40 grams of yarn left. I could make maybe one additional sock. So you get three individual socks from one skein of yarn, but that doesn't make any sense either. So I have like these little gram, like 30 gram, one ounce balls of yarn everywhere. 
And so I was thinking about combining all of those and making a scrappy version of this. So kind of like holding two or three strands together. And then as soon as one ball falls, like runs out, then you just join on another one. And they might be all crazy colors. They might be all different, but kind of Frankenstein something like this together. Um, you could also do that with making scrappy socks. But I feel like 30 ounces, I mean, 30, 30 grams, you're going to get quite a length of sock and it's not going to be as scrappy as you want it to look unless you keep changing colors. And that, that sounds like more work. <laughs> In any case, these are the kinds of things that I have been working on. Laura is asking what kind of machine I knit this one on. This one was knit on the Silver Reed SK155, which is a bulky gauge machine. I'm in love with this machine right now. I'm absolutely in love with it. Um, and so what it does is it is a, um, it accepts thicker weight yarn. So we have the, uh, the plastic bed LK150 here at the studio and um, people here at the Sweet Georgia uh, team, they're learning how to use this knitting machine. It's been fantastic. Um, Anita might be able to tell you about the, the, the thing that she's whipped off in order to start a sweater that she's working on right now. She she knit the main part of the sweater on the LK150 uh, using the mohair silk DK. It's looking fantastic. I, when it's done, maybe I can share it with you. Um, but that is um, a plastic bed machine and it accepts closer to like DK weight, uh, fingering weight, DK weight. When you start to get into the worsted weight, it starts to feel a little bit hard to push. Um, and so this SK155, which is a bulky weight machine, it just it's amazing. It just is super solid and can knit multiple strands of things together at the same time. So um, is Silver Reed like older brother machines? I don't know enough about brother machines. I have one that I'm trying to restore right now and learning how to use. And so that's that one. Um, yeah, knitting machines is, 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 is on my list of things to learn this year for sure. So the second thing that I wanted to talk about today is this idea of how being a multi-craftual maker, I think that the challenge that we have here is kind of being overwhelmed with the sheer volume of the creative projects that we want to take on, right? Um, I think that if you are anything like me, you're seeing like yarn, you see spinning fiber, you want to take the spinning fiber, you want to make it in yarn, you imagine what the yarn could be, then you imagine like making that hand spun yarn into socks or into a shawl, or you can weave with it. Like there's just so many things because we have acquired a lot of different skills in a lot of different areas. We see more potential in everything. <laughs> um, even this year, like very, very shortly, we're going to be starting a course with Rachel Smith in the School of Sweet Georgia talking about spinning with silk. And all of a sudden, that's going to open an entirely other sort of window of play, like another sandbox to play in, playing with texture from silk and shine. And how can we spin silk for weaving? And are we going to include silk into sock yarn? And it just becomes like, oh my gosh, so many things, so many things to do. So I don't know how you guys do your planning every year, but this is one of the things that I have started to do. And it's kind of like a more craft focused brain dump. And I'm calling it sort of like the 100 list exercise. And so I encourage you to try this exercise as well. And it's very, very, very simple. You basically just start with a number one <laughs> and then you just start listing every single thing that comes into your brain about what you would like to do, what you might want to make now, what you might want to make later, like every single thing that's in every single corner of your brain. Um, and I totally know that it is possible that things will come up this year that were not going to be on your list. Like last year, January this year, I had no idea that I was going to go down this entire knitting machine rabbit hole. No idea. Um, but you can always add to your list so many things. Just make sure that you just capture everything that is in your brain about what you would like to do. So many, many years ago, um, when I was teaching uh, students in person at Plastics Arts, I actually made a list of 100 things that everybody could do with knitting and spinning. And I wanted to just kind of like share this really quickly with you. Let me see if I can... You can see this is the bucket list that I made um, many, many years ago. And the whole idea with this is <clears throat> to list a whole bunch of different ideas that could spark as inspiration for somebody. So like I listed every 
possible thing that I could think of at the time. And I still had over 105 things. Um, and most of them were spinning things. There were some dyeing things on here. And there's just a few weaving things. You could easily, easily make a list of 100 things that you might want to make over your lifetime, over like a bucket list over your lifetime of just weaving things if you wanted to. But, you know, this was like to be able to spin a gossamer weight yarn that was like one goal and then maybe another goal is to be able to spin a yarn with a specific twist per inch like have i developed the skill in order to be able to do that um another one was like maybe spin camel yarn maybe spin cashmere yarn maybe spin a uh, fractal yarn maybe learn how to prepare an indigo vat maybe learn how to wind warp using a warping reel uh basically maybe like learning to weave overshot i feel like at the time when i wrote this bucket list i did not even know what overshot was but i just knew that it was something that was available for me to learn how to do and so i put it on the list um as a someday maybe sort of thing and so the idea here is that um we have this list it's actually in it's embedded in the epic cloth workbook that we have at the school of sweet georgia so if you're already a member there you can go to the epic class class and then download the workbook and you'll get this entire list but the idea is to just use some of these ideas to spark your own list and just write down all of these ideas so like yeah louise you're saying i would like to learn how to knit a top-down seamless sweater Absolutely. Greta saying, I would like to spin a sweater quantity of yarn. Uh, absolutely. I remember subscribing to Spin Off Magazine and seeing they had like an anniversary sweater that was entirely hand spun. There was color work on the bottom. It was beautiful. It just looked like the ultimate, ultimate epic project to be able to spin your own yarn so consistently that you could be able to knit your own sweater from it. Some of these things still completely intimidate me. So, uh, yeah, I would just like for you guys to write your own list of 100 things that you want to do. And it doesn't have to be precious. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just has to be, it has to feel complete to you. It has to feel like you emptied every part of your brain. So maybe you only have a list of 10 things or maybe 20 things and that's totally fine, but just keep going until you feel like everything is out on the paper. Um, in terms of like a creative process, creative workflow this part of the process is was brainstorming but it's called like divergent thinking it's to be like really open to all the different possibilities it's big sky thinking this is like what if you know maybe five years from now i could do blah 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 um and so i have actually been reading this book about uh in creating creative spaces like creating environments and spaces that encourage creative thinking and encourage creativity and so it's funny that they were saying that um divergent thinking this kind of brainstorming thinking can be helped if you're sitting in a room that is calm that is relaxing and that is painted blue so i don't know if you have any like cafes nearby that are painted blue or if you have a room in your house that's painted like light blue but that could be a good room to sit in as you're brainstorming and doing this kind of idea generation so that's just one thing to think about um like on my list my list is very very long right now um uh, yeah <laughs> I have a lot of things on my list, but I also include um, other, you know, other goals that I might have, other goals that I might have around designing, uh, making things for the school, all sorts of things like that. So all of that is on the list as well. Um, the next part of that exercise is to kind of go through your list. Don't be overwhelmed by your list. The whole point is just to have your list in a sort of a safe place on paper so that you can see everything, but then go through your list and look at every single thing and then think, can you imagine yourself doing this in the next five years? Can you imagine yourself doing this in the next two years? Is this something you could possibly imagine doing in the next one year? Is this something that you could imagine doing the, in the next three months? Maybe this is something that you could do now. And what I'm looking at when I look at the list is what things make me super excited? Like what makes me crazy excited? Like just does this item give me energy? Does it make me feel excited, um, curious, all of this kind of stuff? So I have on my list that I want to weave a full-size Crookbrack rug. <laughs> I do. I really would like to be able to weave a rug, like a full-size rug on my Mira loom. But every time I think about that, I feel tired, which is not great. So it's not something that I can, at this point in time in my life, move forward on because I don't feel like I have sufficient energy to 
put into that kind of a project or sufficient amount of time or lead time to be able to do it. And so it's a dream that I have. It's something that I want to do someday, one day, I want to make this full size rug, but not now. And so this part of the uh, entire process is actually called convergent thinking. This is where you take all your huge ideas and then you start to pick things. You start to decide on things and like remove options. Um, and apparently this process, this part of the process can be helped if you were sitting in a room that is painted red because red provides urgency. It provides like pushing you towards making decisions. Um, and so that could be very, very helpful. <laughs> um, so I would just pick a couple of things to focus on. Ideally, just one thing. Um, and it doesn't mean that you are never going to do the other 99 things on your list. It just means that those things are just waiting for you for later. You don't need to think about them right now. Just focus on one thing at a time if at all possible. This is again, something that I talk about in that multi-craftual mindset course that we have also on the school. Um, it, my, my mom always tells me like, there's a Chinese proverb, I think it is, that if you have one foot on two boats, like each foot is on a different boat that you're gonna end up falling in the water. Um, there's like multiple different ways of describing that same idea. But if you're, you can't ride two horses at the same time, that kind of thing. So ideally, if you wanna get anywhere, you would just focus on one thing at a time. Now, I feel like it, there are caveats to this because in the fiber arts, it's a little bit contextual, right? Like I can only weave on my loom when I'm sitting at my loom. And so I'm gonna make progress on my loom when I'm sitting at my loom but I could be knitting or crocheting in the car. I could have it with me and it's portable. So um, that's where I'm thinking, it's not necessarily true that you can only pick one thing with the fiber arts. It's kind of like one thing given whatever context you happen to be in. So just kind of think about like what it is that you wanna work on, um, but the idea is just to really set up some blinders. So like I'm focused on this thing, I'm focused on making these things. And then you get to like, fully enjoy the experience of making these things rather than thinking about all of the other things that could be made. <laughs> so uh, I know um, Vicky is mentioning, uh, she, she was mentioning, I think she might be talking about it in the school forums, but she's talking about she, how she's gonna be taking things one month at a time. So rather than planning out the whole year and saying, these are the projects that I'm gonna do for the next 12 months, she is kind of like looking at all the options that she has available and then talking about, well, this month, this is what captures me. And this is what I'm going to focus on this month. And then next month, you can reevaluate. Um, other people are, are looking at the whole year. Maybe they're doing a plan, like a make nine. This year, I want to make these nine things. That's absolutely a thing too. Um, for me, I think I'm going to be looking at things in terms of three month blocks, just because that's how we do everything here. You know, planning content for the school, planning content and planning courses and all this kind of stuff. We work in, in quarters. And so I'm kind of like working with that time frame as well. So after three months, I can come back to my list of 100 things, 99 things, and consider, well, what's exciting to me now? What do I want to work on now? Um, so the idea is that like, I don't want to work on 50 things this year. I don't want to make 50 things. <laughs> I just want to make some things that I feel really engaged with, that I feel really passionate about, that I feel really proud about. And um, during this whole thing, I also want to be able to improve my skills, whether it's, you know, using the knitting machine or using the circular sock knitting machine, whatever it is. So think a little bit about what is it that you want to do this year? Looking at your list, what do you want to do this year? And then think about the pacing or the intensity of how you want to do this. Like, depending on what your schedule looks like, maybe you are able to knit two hours every night, or maybe you're able to knit 15 minutes once a week. It depends on everyone's schedule, it depends on how much time you have. Um, and so what is reasonable uh, in terms of what you can accomplish given the amount of time that you have? Um, and then how are you gonna develop this habit of making? So rather than thinking, I am gonna knit a sweater this year, you could think I'm gonna knit I'm going to spend 30 minutes on my sweater every day or every other day. I'm just going to get into the habit of pulling out my project every night after dinner. And that's what I'm going to do. Or I'm going to pull out my project every time I'm sitting in the car, whatever it is. So trying to find a way of making it part of your life rather than saying, oh, this is the goal that I'm trying to get to at the end of the year. 
and then getting to the end of the year and being like, I don't have the sweater that I wanted to make. So that's one of the things. So this year I have a couple of different focuses. And so I've kind of categorized these into different things. So the first thing is that one of the things that I really want to do this year is I'm going to be doing a lot of uh, weaving for the school, but I'm also wanting to do more designing for the school. So I'm going to design hopefully more projects for the school and sort of solidifying a process, like a workflow around how I document my samples, how I create these, um, the project specs and how I create the written pattern for these weaving projects. So there's that aspects of it. The other thing is that we are very often going after like the new, 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 like the next thing, what's the new thing to learn? What's the next thing to learn? And, um, I feel like this year, you know, I'm going to be doing a lot of overshot. I'm weaving a lot of crackle and I'm weaving uh, summer and winter because I'm personally interested in blocks and how to create blocks. And I'm doing that right now with just four shaft weaving, but this is something that could translate into eight shaft weaving or 16 or whatever, how many shafts, but I'm learning about these weave structures this year, but it doesn't mean that everything that I work on in design has to be that. So part of what I want to do is also kind of go back and design projects that use techniques that we have been working on, like all these years, plain weave things, twilled weave things. Um, so maybe designing a couple more plain weave blankets, um, especially using the new color system that we are creating at Sweet Georgia. So I want to see those colors incorporated into projects. So it might be plain weave blankets. It might be twill blankets. It might be more twill towels. I love the kitchen towels that I have woven and I use at home. They're all 8-2 cotton. I love them. I want everybody in the world <laughs> to have the joy of using hand-woven cotton towels. It's it's a, like a wonderful experience. Um, and so that's something that I want to be able to do and do more of and share. So there's a lot of those kinds of things that I want to work on as well. So it's kind of like two steps forward, one step back, and that's totally okay because it's kind of reviewing and learning new things and then reviewing the things that you currently learn. So a little bit of forward, a little bit of back. Um, there are definitely other techniques that I want to learn, um, but I'm putting them on my 100 item list and kind of saving them in the back burner. So things like deflected double weave is on my list of things to do at some point in time and turned twill and all of that kind of stuff. I think that they are beautiful. I want to do more crope brag, all of these kinds of things, but they are kind of like in a holding pen until I have more time and I'm available. The third thing that I'm sort of like focused on this year is very much machine knitting and uh, converting hand knitting stuff to machine knitting. Because I mean, I come from a hand knitting world and all of the patterns that I use and we use are hand knitting patterns. And so many beautiful things are being designed for hand knitters. Um, but I would like to be able to make some of those things on the machine. So really learning about how to convert things, how to like reimagine things in my brain one way to the next. I should show you, this is actually what I'm working on right now. I, I made a whole video about it. Well, it's not edited yet, but I filmed it already. But this is the yoke of the Studley sweater. This is one half of the finished yoke. Um, and so this was a like an interesting way of looking at yoke construction, color work yoke construction. Um, and it's very different. Well, it's quite different from how you would do it if you were hand knitting it. So this is something, yeah, this is the video that's coming out next Friday. <laughs> you guys will see that one. But yeah, this year I want to finish knitting that Studley sweater. I want to actually make um, another one using our BFL and Silk Fine yarn, using the same pattern, the same uh, stranded color works sort of situation, but using um, our colors from our new color system and giving that a try and seeing how that all works. I'm also currently working on like a swatch library of all of the different textures of yarn that are going to be mixed together. So what does it feel like if you take one strand of flax and silk fine and mix it with one strand of silk mist? What does that look like? What does it feel like? So <laughs> I have a bag of every single yarn that we have and um, I'm just like right now mixing and combining all of these yarns together 
uh, on the machine to make all of these swatches and create a swatch library. And so that's what we are going to uh, be <laughs> working with. Greta saying Felicia is pulling us all into machine knitting. It is true. I did a demo one day at the studio after we had like a team lunch and then just giving everybody a chance to see what it feels like to use the knitting machine and uh, see what happens with all of that. Um, at the holidays, I sort of gave myself a bit of a challenge by offering to crank uh, a pair of socks for various people. Eventually, everybody on my team, I want to knit a pair of socks for them. Um, but this is a, it is a challenge for me because everybody has a uh, different length legs, different size feet and different preferences, different yarn preferences, all sorts of things like that. And so I have, this is like the second pair of socks that I'm making. Um, and I'm just doing the Kitchener on these and I'm becoming very, 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 very good at Kitchener right now. <laughs> so I'm doing a lot of that this year. Um, I also want to this year learn how to use my ribber for the CSM really, really super well so that I can make ribbed socks. Right now, all of the socks that I'm making are top down cranked socks, stockinette socks on the circular sock knitting machine. And so the goal by the end of this year is to eventually evolve and improve to the point where I can use the ribber really, really consistently and not drop stitches and then be able to make fully ribbed socks. And that is something else. Um, the other thing is, <clears throat> I think Juliet <clears throat> is on the uh, chat here too. Juliet had mentioned before the idea of knitting socks from the toe up. And she recommended that toe up weight set. I think it's called tip toe tool from Chambord in Quebec. And so I ordered one of those. It's, it's on its way here. And so I'm going to try knitting socks from the toe up. That's the next thing as well. Um, yeah, it's a lot of things to do. I, on my list already of just knitting projects, I think like I have 11 knitting projects and I'm 11 counts like all of the socks as one project. <laughs> so it's it's a lot of things. Um, so I don't want to let myself get overwhelmed with all these things. So I'm taking it kind of like one step at a time. Um, and another major, major focus for this year for me personally is to really, really explore the whole color system that we're working on. And so part of that is I am going to redevelop the color play class that we launched the school with like in 2017, we created this course called Color Play, and it was all about um, teaching how color theory works, how to combine colors, how to make color combinations, like pick two colors that go together, pick five colors that go together. How do we do this? And so that's one thing that I'm going to completely remake this year. And so I'll show you just like a quick snapshot of what we've done in case you haven't seen it. Um, this is the new colorways that we have released. So the idea is that these colors, this element color system, this is going to represent our color wheel. This is 18 colors all the way around the circle. This represents everything from this kind of cyan color up here. This is a clear yellow here and then a clear magenta here. And so those colors mixed together creates this entire color wheel. And then on the inside of the color wheel, if you guys have done any um, of the dyeing classes that we have at the School of Sweet Georgia, these are the inner colors that have been created from those color wheel colors. And <laughs> so one of the things that we are doing is that this is what was released last fall, but this spring we are releasing light versions of all of these, like the lighter, um, paler versions of all of these. And in the fall, we're going to release all of the darker versions of all of these. And so what we have here is now we have these 10 hues that come from the inside of our color wheel. These are super deep, very rich, really nuanced, interesting colors. And now we have them in a value scale as well. So we're going to have light versions of them, mid-tone versions, and then dark tones. That means that when we mix and combine all these colors together, they are all going to go together. They're going to look good together. I'm so excited about this. And so this is part of the thing that I'm trying to focus on is like sweaters that I make, I want to use these colors and mix and blend to do, um, to figure out what the combinations are going to be. And then to help everyone else also make combinations of colors from these as well. So that is kind of what I am sort of focused on working on this year. So in terms of trying to keep it more compact and not so overwhelming, what I'm doing is I actually wrote down, I wrote down 
this quarter, this three months, I'm focused on six things. <laughs> it sounds like so many things when you say it, but it is, it's six things. And so the first thing is to finish weaving the crackle samples that are on my fanny loom at home. So if you follow my Instagram account called Low Meets Loom, I uh, have been posting about this crackle warp that I have been weaving for months now. Um, and it's just because every time I have a few minutes, I'll go over and weave a different treadling pattern on that warp. And so it's one crackle threading that's on my loom. It's just all been threaded. I threaded it in like August. And then every couple, whenever I have time, I'll come over and I'll weave a chunk. I'll weave a section that is one particular kind of crackle treadling. And so lots of different things happen on that one warp. It's actually quite amazing. So I'm doing that as a way of um, trying out different samples. And so once that whole warp is done, then I'm going to pull it off um, and design projects for Crackle from that whole warp. So that's one of the things that I'm focused on doing. After that is done, I have actually a, a warp that's already wound and ready to go on the loom, and that's going to be for all the overshot samples. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to weave a whole warp full of overshot samples, different treadlings, different patterns, and different yarns, all sorts of things like that. And then out of that, I'll design all the overshot projects for the overshot class that's coming for the school. So those are two of the big things that I'm working on. And then um, I'm going to be designing a lot of specs for these weaving projects. So maybe like twill blankets, plain weave blankets, whatever it is. Now, the trick here, this is one thing that I'm actually going to reach out to you guys about, is that we are going to need, well, I would like to invite people who are weavers to potentially raise their hand if they're interested in becoming sample weavers for the School of Sweet Georgia. So if anybody is out there weaving, wanting to weave, um, yeah, it's kind of like test weaving. We know we, we coming from a world of hand knitters and hand knitting designers, we know of test knitters for a long time. Sample knitters, test knitters is definitely a thing. Um, it's not so much a thing to, to find sample weavers or test weavers, but that is what I'm hoping to reach out and find as well. So like I would give you all of my instructions and I could send you yarn and then you could weave it and tell me if my instructions need clarification. And then we kind of refine from there and we, we would work out sort of like a program for sample weavers. So this is something that is brand new that we are looking to create coming this year because I cannot weave every single thing myself. <laughs> it's too many things, too many things that I want to see created in the world. Um, the number four item is cranking CSM socks for all of my people, including my husband, who says that he will actually wear hand to net socks now, uh, my kids and the, the team here and everything like that. Um, for the held together or hold along, make along that we're going to do in February, I want to do my held together project using that knitting machine, that SK155. It's the bulky weight machine. And um, in my mind, what I think I want to do is I want to do the Flannery sweater. So Flannery is a sweater. It's like a very foundational V-neck sweater pattern that Tabitha designed for a class that we Put on the School of Sweet Georgia and it was about knitting your first sweater and so originally she set it up for using superwash worsted it was at a very specific gauge and then these are the measurements and everything but Tabitha has completely reworked the Flannery pattern to make it into a customizable um, sort of a calculator pattern so she's put it into Google Sheets or Excel and so basically all you need to do is figure out what kind of gauge you're getting from the yarn that you're knitting and the needles that you're using, like whatever fabric you're getting that you really like, figure out what that gauge is and then do all of your measurements. And then you just plug those numbers into the spreadsheet and then poof, it will come out with all of the numbers that you need in order to knit the pattern. So I'm hoping to do this. I'm hoping to crank some samples or it's like, like knit some samples on the, um, the knitting machine to find out what gauge I like for this particular fabric. And then I'm gonna plug all those numbers into the spreadsheet and then knit a held together flannery. So maybe it's got silk mist and some other yarns knit together, hold it together and make this V-neck sweater on the knitting machine. It's kind of like many, many things going on at the same time, but that is one of the goals that I have for February. And then, then finally, by, by March, I want to have this sweater finished. Uh, 
yeah, I would like to see this done because I think it's really interesting and it's lovely. Like once this yarn gets washed, it's really, really nice and soft. So these are all of the things that I want to work on now in order to remember, like I've written it down and it's in my phone and everything like that, but I'm actually going to write them down analog by hand in my notebook. And part of this is like, I have little flags here in my notebook and you could use post-its or whatever, but I have these little flags here. These are like little, um, stickers that I got from the Japanese dollar store, but I'm just going to flag the page with this quarter's goals on them. So that way I actually want to look at them over and over and over again. And I'm talking about like every day, every couple of days, flip to that page and review, remind yourself, remind myself what I had intended on doing this particular month. What am I doing. So then rather than getting distracted by the next cool thing that showed up on Instagram and the next beautiful pattern that just got released or whatever, because there's so many beautiful things that could be done. I'm going to look at my list and I'm going to remember, these are the things that I spent a lot of time thinking about and deciding about, and this is what I want to do. And then when I get to the end of the three months, hopefully I will feel like, ah, oh, I actually got some stuff done and I feel good about that. That's the feeling that I want to have. So that's what is on for this year, this next three months. Um, and so I think in the next session, when we get together, when we do these live streams, the next session, I want to talk about time blocking and what I'm doing with my own schedule to block out time so that I have time to work on these kinds of things. Because I think that I mentioned like over the holidays, I, I had almost zero making time, like a lot of time, <laughs> a lot of time did not get used for making. And so I have to find a way to carve that out of the schedule. And so we're going to do that together. And maybe you guys can do it with me too. Um, so if you would like that 100 list bucket list inspiration page, I encourage you guys to go find the Epic Cloth Workbook. And so that is in the School of Sweet Georgia. If you're a member, you'll be able to access that and find that. And then I just encourage you to write down as many ideas as you can, and then just pick a few to focus on. Um, you can look, we have a plan your make nine course that Tabitha created. Um, if you want to do a make nine, she has great guidance and instructions for that. I also have a multi craft tool maker mindset workbook. Uh, it's like a little ebook also on the school. And that is really about like how you organize your time, how you organize your space, how you organize, uh, yeah, your energy, your focus, all those kinds of things. So there's a lot of things to think about when you have the challenge of working on multiple things at the same time. Um, and then the other thing that I wanted to mention is that if you do need sort of like a kickstart to your fiber arts journey, last year, we started this program called the SOS Scholarship. And uh, we supported um, we supported someone in the school and and really sort of helped get them started with equipment and supplies and materials and all sorts of things like that. So you can find on Instagram Sage and Marjoram and they are posting so many beautiful things that they've been making over the course of the year. And we really would love to be able to support more people. And so we're going to start this uh, again for 2023 we're going to do this sos scholarship again and so applications for that are going to open soon and so bridget and i were we're working on um getting that going and started so i'll be able to let you guys know about that probably very very shortly so that is coming up hold along in february is coming up so let's make along find some yarn that you have in your stash that you want to hold together and make into something or make one of these it's five by five it's the easiest easiest possible thing. You can learn how to Kitchener too. <laughs> but this is a really, really great project to use up multiple strands of yarn as well. Um, you'll also look for our Flannery spreadsheet that's going to come out soon. Tabitha's just putting the finishing touches on that. And then the last thing that I wanted to uh, talk about and sort of kind of come back to because I mentioned at the beginning of the year, at the beginning of the session is that we do have a new community forum that we set up for sweet Georgia for sweet Georgia, the community for sweet Georgia. I know that we have since the beginning, we've had um, a community forum for the school of sweet Georgia. And so anybody who's a member of the school has very deep, insightful, wonderful, thoughtful, fantastic conversations that are happening inside the school of sweet Georgia. Um, but one of the things that we discovered over the, over the past couple of years is that it's, um, 
for anybody who's like working on an advent make along or working on the mystery knit along um it requires a different kind of chat and communication. And so what we decided to do as a trial experiment is we started a Discord server. <laughs> so we just started a dis Discord server and um, you can join it if you go to sweetgeorgiayarns.com slash Discord, D-I-S-C-O-R-D, and there's no trailing slash. And so just, you can sign up there. If you already are on Discord, it's very easy just to add us. And then you can start chatting with other people who are interested in knitting and spinning and weaving and dyeing and tapestry and machine knitting and circular sock knitting and all of these things that we talk about here. You can join us in the Discord and chat about it there. And so we're gonna do this as a bit of an experiment. We're just kind of like slowly announcing this to people, slowly mentioning it. And um, you can come and join and chat with us there. And then in February, we are going to host all of the make along, hold along chat inside the Discord community. So that is kind of like, oh, yeah, Star Athena saying, oh, I use Discord all the time. Woohoo. Fantastic. So um, just to give you like a really quick look at what that looks like, um, let's see. I'm going to go to here. You can kind of see, well, this is, hmm, don't. That's what it looks like so far. We're just getting started, but this is kind of how it's organized. And we just have our hold along conversation is going to be here in August. We usually do a mystery knit along. That's going to be here. These are our chat channels so far for crochet, dyeing, knitting, CSM knitting, machine knitting, spinning, weaving. We're going to post things about taking back Friday here and low meets loom in here as well. And so we are just sort of starting to build this out figuring out how it all works. <laughs> uh, but we're hoping that this kind of uh, is going to be a good space for all of our Sweet Georgia community. So anybody who's not necessarily yet in the school can come join us here as well. So if you've been watching the YouTube videos and you want to chat about it here, you can join us on Discord. Now, one thing I do want to mention is that if you are already a member of the school, we do have um, an ability for you to connect your SOS account with your Discord account. So that way, when we see you in Discord, you will show up as an SOS member and we'll know that you are in the school as well. So this is, if you go to your dashboard in the school, you will be able to scroll all the way down to the bottom and find that we have like a little blurb on the Discord thing here now too. And so there would be a button here that would be green for you if you haven't yet joined, but you basically connect your SOS account to your Discord account and it will automatically assign you with the SOS member role in Discord. And then we'll be able to see you and we'll be able to know, oh, you're in the school as well. And so that is something that uh, could be super, super fun. And yeah, so it's something that you could definitely continue to use to be able to chat all of these community conversations on Discord, they do not replace our SOS conversations that are happening in the community forums. And Vicky and Robin will continue to be in the SOS forums, moderating and welcoming new members and everything like that. I feel like the SOS forums is definitely for like much more complete, deeper, threaded conversations where you can find things, search things a little bit easier. And the Discord is going to be more for like a casual, light, relaxed chat sort of environment and so we it's nice to be able to have bo both <laughs> both and is what i'm talking about so that is basically it for today i have talked for straight 58 minutes that is crazy <laughs> Thank you guys so much for being here. It's wonderful to see you all in the chat. I hope that you guys will find us on the Discord community server. Um, and otherwise, I will see you inside the School of Sweet Georgia. You can find us on Instagram at Sweet Georgia. You can find the school at School of Sweet Georgia. My weaving stuff is at Low Meets Loom. We have lots of things going on for 2023. So I hope you guys will join us and spend more time here. If you like this live stream, we come here every, uh, the first Friday, no, the second Friday, the second Friday of every month, we come here and we do a live stream here on YouTube for Taking Back Friday Live. And otherwise we come here every Friday with new videos. So I hope that you'll subscribe and come visit us again soon. Thanks so much for being here. I guess I will see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.